This past Sunday, we theorized that today for Nintendo shareholders meeting, we would get real official news about the Nintendo Switch 2. And the primary reasonings behind this were one, because we've seen announcements like this in the past during these types of shareholders meetings. Two, because there is a need for Nintendo to express clarity on their future. And three, because of a cryptic message from an industry analyst who has done things like this in the past. And what happened today, just 46 minutes ago, Nintendo has confirmed some huge features for Nintendo Switch 2. And that's what we're going to be breaking down this time on Andre's Restart. Hello everyone, this is Andres Restart. I just got back from the gym, I was in the middle of doing sets and I saw my phone with a little Nintendo blip and I was like, wait, hold on a second, that's in Japanese, that's something important, and sure enough, it is. It's something important, it's real official Nintendo Switch 2 news, finally. So, what is the news? Well, let me read it for you here. This is Furukawa. At today's corporate management policy briefing, we announced that Nintendo Switch software will also be playable on the successor to Nintendo Switch. Nintendo Switch Online will be available on the successor to Nintendo Switch as well. Further information about the successor to Nintendo Switch, including its compatibility with Nintendo Switch, will be announced at a later date. So that is the main bit of news here. Two major confirmations. One, you will be able to play your Switch 1 games on Switch 2, but also two, your Nintendo Switch Online account will transfer over to your Switch 2. Now there's still flexibility in what exactly this means. Some people are concerned if this just means digitally or physically. I'm going to assume they mean completely. However, they do say here at the bottom, Further information about the successor to Nintendo Switch, including its compatibility, will be announced at a later date. So it sounds like there is a little bit more to the story on just the level of compatibility here, but there are a variety of things to take into account when it comes to compatibility. Will you be able to transfer over your micro SD cards? How will you be able to transfer over your saves? What type of information from your Switch Online account will transfer over? Will literally every single game on Switch be backwards compatible? There's a variety of things to take into account here, which I'm sure Nintendo will detail further once they start fully detailing everything about the Switch 2. But we still have more information to break down here. And before going forward here, let me just briefly ask that if you've gotten to this point and you do enjoy my content, to please subscribe and hit that notification bell. So we have a few images here, thank you to Warrior64 on Twitter for pointing this out from Nintendo's official business site. But they do expand a little bit on the different things that have been discussed. So here we see this image, we've seen this before, but now with more context. Future Outlook, expanding Nintendo IP, value-added services, Nintendo account. And here it's just sort of suggesting how Nintendo wants to carry over their Nintendo account, but now they have bullets in reference to the successor to the Nintendo Switch, Switch 2. So here it reads, until Nintendo Switch, there was no easy way to have consumers purchase and gameplay histories carry over across platform generations. As a result, our relationship with consumers was interrupted when a new system was purchased. And I think this is a really important point to consider here for a couple reasons. One, by saying both purchase and gameplay histories, there is an implication that everything we've purchased on Switch 1, that most to maybe everything, and also, our data of these games will carry over. But also, Nintendo is making mention of how they've had struggle going from one generation to another. But now, thanks to Switch Online and Nintendo accounts, that can all carry over along with the games. And this is going to facilitate, hopefully, a more smoother transition from one generation to the other than really ever before. Continuing on though, the introduction of Nintendo account made it possible to tie consumers' history to their personal account, enabling Nintendo to maintain a continuous relationship with the consumers across platform generations. This is pretty much expanding on what we just talked about. We have communicated that we plan on making an announcement regarding the successor to Nintendo Switch during this fiscal year. We believe that it is important for Nintendo's future to make use of the Nintendo account and carry over the good relationship that we have built with the over 100 million annual playing users on the Nintendo Switch to its successor. So, 
This also basically just expands on what I just discussed. However, there is a very important implication here that I know would have been a talking point otherwise. Here they say, we have communicated that we plan on making an announcement regarding the successor to Nintendo Switch during this fiscal year, which means, essentially, what we're getting now, while it is technically an announcement, it is not THE announcement that they're getting at here. It further implies that the announcement that Nintendo was referring to back on May 7th, and also now, is likely the actual proper reveal of the console where we're going to see it, where there will be footage, where there will be gameplay. So this isn't the news that Nintendo promised us back on May 7th. This is additional little news. The information coming in waves or phases as Furukawa has discussed in the past. But reading this last bullet here, thus we will make Nintendo Switch Online a service based on Nintendo account available on the successor to Nintendo Switch. So yes, Switch Online likely will see some changes, but will also be available on Switch 2. But there is more to discuss here. Nintendo Switch software will also be playable on the successor to Nintendo Switch. We've already discussed this. Furthermore, Nintendo Switch software will also be playable on the successor to Nintendo Switch. In addition to being able to play Nintendo Switch software they currently own, consumers will be able to choose their next purchase from a broad selection of titles released for Nintendo Switch. So, maybe I'm looking into things a little bit deeply here, but there is a suggestion of, of doing two different things. This bullet point is referring to taking our already existing library, but then also being able to make future purchases on your Switch 2 regarding Switch 1 games. So I think that bodes well for the library not being a limited library, either physically or digitally or in any other way. Which also, by the way, since we're talking about backwards compatibility here, there is an implication that the form factor of the Switch 2, how it looks, how it works, will be very similar to Switch 1. Reading this next bullet here, further information about the successor to Nintendo Switch, including its compatibility with Nintendo Switch I explained today, will be announced at a later date. We pretty much know this, but there's other interesting things here. Strengthening development resources, and we see a whole bunch of different Nintendo Studios. Here is a list of our research and development subsidiaries. Since 2021, we have added Next Level Games, SRD, and Shiver in game development, Nintendo Pictures and Visual Content for Non-Game Entertainment, and Nintendo Systems as part of our effort to maintain and expand relationships with our consumers. While we do not rule out the possibility of further mergers and acquisitions, our priority is to organically expand the organization so that new staff members are able to fully learn and understand our creative culture. So I find this to be very interesting. This first bullet here talks about how this is a list of their research and development subsidiaries. And it really gets me wondering. We know that some of these studios are absolutely doing different tangential products, helping to port different things, like in the case of Shiver. But then also we have a developer like Monolithsoft, who we've talked about in, this, in the past, is doing a lot of research and development for Nintendo across the board. But then we also have a studio like Retro Studios that we haven't really seen that much of, but we have seen how amazing Metroid Prime Remastered looks, and they're building on that for Metroid Prime 4. We've had a lot of questions as to what Retro Studios has been doing behind the scenes all these years because they haven't put out that many games. There has been some speculation that perhaps a lot of what they've been working on is research and development, building up some sort of engine, for Nintendo projects, and looking at what they've done with Metroid Prime Remastered and what they're doing with Metroid Prime 4 Beyond, how these games look visually far more impressive than most Switch games, they've definitely been putting some work in even though it's been behind the scenes. And I really love this chart right here. Many series titles are showing growth on Nintendo Switch. You see Pikmin, Kirby, Metroid, and Xenoblade, some of my favorite series, Pikmin 4, one of my favorite games of generation. Kirby in the Forgotten Land, one of my favorite games of generation. Metroid Prime Remastered and Metroid Dread, some of my favorite games of generation. Xenoblade Chronicles, everything Xenoblade Chronicles is absolute gold. All masterpieces here. They're talking about how all these franchises have seen significant growth compared to the prior generation. This is wonderful news. I'll go ahead and read these bullets here. This chart compares the total sales for series titles on Wii U, and Nintendo 3DS versus series titles on Nintendo Switch for each IP. 
many series titles such as Pikmin, Kirby, Metroid, and Xenoblade Chronicles have seen dramatic sales growth on Nintendo Switch. And I feel that the implication here is that Nintendo has faith in growing their other IP outside of your standard ones like Mario, Pokemon, Zelda, Splatoon, Animal Crossing, and Smash, and also Mario Kart. Those are the huge ones, but Nintendo is acknowledging that there are other series that have growth potential here. Pikmin 4, best-selling game in the series to date. Curbing the Forgotten Land, best-selling game in the series to date. The same can be said for Metroid Dread, the same can be said for Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Nintendo plans on expanding these IP and perhaps others as well. What about Donkey Kong? What about Star Fox? Perhaps Kid Icarus? F-Zero? Wave Race? When we're talking about the next generation, these other IP could reach a whole other level on Switch 2. And that has me extremely excited. It's just refreshing right now to get some official news from Nintendo. And in terms of what this might mean in terms of reveal timing and all that good stuff, well, we're going to sit on this for a little bit. There's some good new information to sift through right now. So let me know what you all think in the comments below. This is Andres Restart. Thank you so much for listening and watching. And I'll see you all really soon. Take care. Bye.